A panhandle man was taken into custody over the weekend after driving his car into a house. I'm Victoria Kramer with KNOP's Panhandle Roundup. According to the Scotts Bluff Police Department, emergency personnel were called to the intersection of East 15th and 10th Avenue after a crash between a vehicle and a house was reported around 930 Saturday evening. Investigators determined that 60 year old Braulio Cruz was westbound speeding when he ran a stop sign, drove across an empty lot through a fence and into a home. Authorities say that the home was occupied at the time, but there were no injuries. Crews and a 38-year-old passenger suffered minor injuries and were treated at the scene. The home received significant damage and the vehicle has been totaled. Crews was arrested and faces several charges, including driving under the influence of alcohol and willful reckless driving. And the Scotts Bluff Police Department has issued a warning to Panhandle residents about email scams. Authorities are reminding residents to be vigilant about emails that may come from a local business appearing to be official, but in fact are scams trying to separate victims from their money. Several local businesses have advised police that their email systems had been compromised, sending emails to customers asking for payments via wire transfer. Authorities suggest if you receive such requests to call the business and verify prior to sending any form of payment. And a Panhandle resident returned home to find their dog had been beaten and shot. According to News Channel Nebraska, a Kimball resident found their dog on their porch beaten and shot at their home on Longhorn Road. Kimball County Sheriff David Hoddle says based on the canine's condition, authorities suspect the incident took place earlier in the day. A $1,000 reward is being offered for any information that leads to the arrest of the perpetrator. Just contact the Kimball County Sheriff's Office. Now let's go to Andre for a quick check of the Panhandle weather. Well, thank you so much, Victoria. And we are seeing pretty much quiet conditions at this time here across the Panhandle. And this is just going to continue throughout the rest of the day. And we may see an isolated shower here and there, but for the most part, things are going to remain dry. And our current temperatures at the moment are mainly in the 50s and the 60s. And we have 58 degrees there in Alliance, 50 here in Scotts Bluff, and a very warm 66 degrees there in Gordon. And throughout the rest of the day we will see those temperatures increase only into the 50s in the 60s so it's going to be quite a, a cooler than normal the day that we're supposed to be seeing this time of year with those partly cloudy skies tonight temperatures will drop on down into the 40s and 30s so it's going to be a relatively mild night overnight tonight and as we enter into our tuesday we will see those temperatures increase into the low to mid 60s and we will see those mainly sunny conditions back to you victoria Thank you, Andre. And April's tornado count is in the United States. It's now in the second highest in the, in the month on record, according to the National Weather Service. The U.S. had at least 300 tornadoes in April. On average, there are 182 tornadoes reported during the month. Dozens of tornadoes also touched down in the Midwest, more so than in the South. During the last week of April, more than 100 tornadoes were reported. The NWS says April is the third most active severe weather and tornado month of the year. The months of May and June tend to have higher tornado totals. And late last week, President Joe Biden approved the federal emergency declaration for Nebraska. The approval makes federal funding available to any community members in Douglas and Washington counties. Assistance includes grants for temporary housing, low-cost loans to cover uninsured property losses, as well as programs to help business owners recover. Additional counties requesting for assistance might be declared at a later date. And News 2 has teamed up with the Salvation Army to make a difference for those who are impacted by the Arbor Day tornado outbreak. If you would like to make a donation, you can head over to our News 2 website. Every donation will go toward victims in Nebraska and Iowa. And Nebraska Governor Jim Pillen has announced that the state of Nebraska will not comply with the Biden administration's new rules for Title IX. In a news release, Pillen said the, quote, rewrite of Title IX is an affront to the common sense idea that men do not belong in women's only spaces, end quote. Pillen says the new rules are a direct attack on the Women's Bill of Rights he established last August. Title IX is the law that prohibits sex discrimination in education programs that receive funding from the federal government. One of the biggest changes provides protections for LGBTQ plus students. The revised guidelines were approved by the Federal Department of Education and are scheduled to go into effect August 1st of this year. And a Kansas man is behind bars after an undercover sex crime investigation by Grand Island Police. 34-year-old Logan Runian was arrested by Norton, Kansas Police last Wednesday. 
Police say Runyon contacted who he thought was an underage female on social media, and instead it was an investigator with GIPD. Police put out an arrest warrant for Runyon and also searched his home. He faces 14 charges ranging from felony sex trafficking of a minor to sexual assault by use of an electronic communication device. He is currently being held in Kansas until he is extradited to Nebraska. And happening today, the Bellevue man found guilty of smothering his two children to death is scheduled to be sentenced to life in prison. However, that could be delayed. On Friday, Adam Price's public defenders asked the court to push back today's sentencing to assess his competency for sentencing. sentencing. The 38-year-old remains in the Sarpy County Jail after being found guilty in March of killing his children in May of 2021 before fleeing to California. And the economy added 175,000 jobs last month, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's much less than economists were expecting in the slowest growth since October. Economists have been anticipating a slowdown in the labor market from the pressure of high interest rates. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate ticked higher to 3.9 percent. April marked the 27th consecutive month jobless claims stayed under 4 percent, a streak last seen in the late 1960s. And that concludes this edition of KNOP's Panhandle Roundup. But remember to join us each weekday as we cover the stories that matter to you.